<laughs> Hi, welcome. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. And comment down below who I should interview next. But today we have we are interviewing a news reporter from Local Four named Victor Williams. So good to have you here. How are you doing today? Pretty good, Max. Thanks for having me, man. You're welcome. Uh, what is your schedule like when at work? Oh man, it's hectic. I'm always busy. So that's that's the main thing. So sorry if already you were having a hard time getting a hold of me and then actually me responding. And then I'm sure it took a while for the whole conversation to play out. You're good. You know? <laughs> yeah. so, so the first email I sent out, I did it. I only got Devin. And then I'm like, and then Sandra said she didn't get it. And I'm just like, okay. So I deleted it off of my inbox, the old ones. And instead of doing it through the website the first time like I did and copied and pasted it to a document. I did it off the website and copy and pasted my question thing into uh, it. Okay, I see. So, so now it's a little different, but it still works. Yeah, no, that's fine, man. So Just... what about what time do you get to work or start? So depending on which day that I have. So if I'm working the day side shift, I have to get to work at about 9 a.m. If I'm working the night side shift, then I get to work at about 2.30 p.m. So it's uh, our meeting that we have at the beginning of the day where we decide what we're going to cover. And then once that happens, we just kind of go out and, you know, we start our route to making those stories, you know, air. Um. Do you have holiday parties with the local four team? No, not me. I mean, sometimes they do have them, but you got to understand, I've only been here going on going on three years. And so I got here right before COVID and all that stuff, man. So yeah. we've, yeah, we've had all that stuff on pause for the most part. Ah. Mm -hmm. I know I've seen, I saw you when you first aired on, not, not the very first day, but I saw like, I'm like, oh, I've seen this. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, man. So it's been pretty cool. I like Local Four a lot. It's full of uh, really good people. They're all nice, and they've made me feel extremely comfortable. I mean, that that kind of goes also for the whole city of Detroit for the most part. It's been like really, really welcoming to me. You know, all the people here are super nice, and uh, you know, they just pretty much welcomed me with open arms. Were you in Detroit before you joined Local 4? No, I came to Detroit solely because of Local 4. Before this, I was in Cleveland, Ohio for two years. And before that, I was in Biloxi, Mississippi for a year and a half. And before that, I was in Jackson, Tennessee. So it's... You've been all over the place. Yeah, man. It's been going from station to station, you know, just when an opportunity presents itself you know, going along for the ride. So you have to do a lot of moving. And I've been basically on the road since I was 21. Ah. Mm -hmm. um, how long does it take to set up the cameras and stuff? Well, the photogs, they have to do that. Um, depending on who I'm working with, the time might vary. So, I mean, if we're, you know, going to a breaking news situation where we need to be out there really quickly, we can make that happen. But if we're, for example, doing like an interview with someone really important, for example, let's just say the president, then, you know, we would take our time to make sure we have our lighting together to get the shot perfect because we want to make it look the best that it can. But we know that for other stories that we might be doing on a daily basis, when we have that really hard and tight deadline, we have to basically take care of them as soon as we can. So we don't have time to really, you know, waste setting up. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you have a desk in the building or? Well, I have a desk in the building, but I'm, I'm barely ever there. I'm always on the roads every single day. I sometimes don't even step into the building for anything. I just park in the garage and go get into the news truck. And then, you know, we go out and, you know, go into the communities and report on whatever's going on there. What What's inside the news trucks? I know we get to sometimes see the outline of it, but what's inside it behind the scenes? That yeah, good question. Seeing? So there's like a desk back there. Usually you have a 
monitor that's mounted on, I guess, the wall of the, the truck back there. We have a keyboard on that desk, a mouse, everything that we need to basically edit the piece out in the field. But if you look to your left, and I'm sorry I can't show you this right now because I'm at home, but if you look to your left, you'd see, I guess, more monitors and a whole bunch of switches and wires. And that's basically what's, what's routing everything to, I guess, from, excuse me, from the monitor and the computer system that we edit on out to the satellite that's on top of the truck in the back. So I don't know if you've ever seen, you know, maybe just driving down the street, man, we might have our satellite, AKA the mast, it'll be all the way up in the air and you can probably see it for miles and people are always wondering what's going on, but that's how we broadcast down the field. Haven't seen it yet, but hopefully soon, hopefully in per person tours soon, or I get a response back about the virtual tour idea. Yeah, that's right. We're working on it. So I'll let you know soon. All right. Yeah. Cool. Um, how many minutes before airing do you have to be the, at the location and set up? Uh, sometimes we don't have a lot of time to set up at the location. Sometimes we do. It just all depends on the circumstances for the day, Max. I mean, you know, if it's a breaking news situation, we're going to rush out there and we're going to set up immediately. Now, I didn't tell you about what we have called a live view, which is basically a backpack, but it's a backpack that in a way has the live truck just crammed inside of it. Uh -huh. So It relies on like cell phone signal strength. And that's how we broadcast if we don't have the live truck with us. It's just a, a backpack, basically. Uh, and uh, yeah, from there, that's how we're able to to broadcast also. Is that how Tim Pamplin does it with the night cam? He has a backpack and then just hooks it up to the camera? Sometimes he does, but Tim Pamplin is also a full-fledged photog. I know not too many people know that. So sometimes he'll work with us out in the field. So he has everything that a standard full talk has. And he has to sometimes, you know, you hear him talking, you know, you never see the guy, but you hear him talking and you see him out there reporting or you can see his camera out there, you know, taking care of the story. So uh, I admire Tim Pampin a lot. The, the Peacock story yesterday was definitely interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tim is really good at what he does. So sometimes if he's not always reporting he's photographing yep sometimes behind the scenes helping out he's a stand-up guy for sure man do you ever do anything in the van for holidays no not really that's really just mainly for travel every now and then we might do a story where you might see us you know reporting from the van but not too much that's just uh strictly for the roads i knew i i I'm not sure what day it was, but sometime uh, on it, I saw a Priya man inside like the driver's seat part of the van. <laughs> yeah, that's because she was probably waiting there while the faux talk was working on something. So a lot of the times we have to switch seats. You know, my faux talk might get inside and depending on where we are on the road, excuse me, man, the driver's seat might be the best place in time. Mm. So. Yeah. And then I know I saw Megan Woods doing a teeth tree. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah. Megan's just because I didn't too. watch it live doesn't mean Instagram doesn't provide it. <laughs> that's right, man. It's funny because that's how our industry is changing. Instagram, all these different social media platforms, they're able to uh, get that message out to people versus, you know, 10 or 15 well, no, even more. Well, no, that's about right. 10 or 15 years ago, it was solely the TV. So, and then now there's Local 4 Plus, the Forecasters yeah. app, a bunch that's of other right. apps. That's right, man. So you can always stay connected. Yes, there's always a way. And then email, too. That's right, man. What a time to be alive, right? Yes. <laughs> do, you, do you ever have a script when you're reporting? Uh, depending on the situation. So... If I'm gonna be out there and I have a little bit of time to write up something, I might be able to just remember the first part of it. And then later on in the piece, once the video comes up, I can then look down at the notes that I have in front of me. But 
a lot of the time we don't have a script for the most part. You see us out there in the field, we're just really talking off the top of our heads. We just know the information so well and we have to of course study it and digest it to the point where we're able to regurgitate it and like you know let people know exactly what's going on is there ever a time you have to report and you're like you've read it enough times and it still doesn't make sense where you're just reading it and thinking about it and then you're just not knowing how to put it no not too much you try to have all that stuff down to begin with Maybe when I was younger in my career, when I was first starting in those really uh, tiny and smaller markets like Jackson, Tennessee and Biloxi, Mississippi, maybe at one point during those days. But, you know, here in Detroit, this is a very top and prestigious market. So you have to have your A game. You know, yes. you can't go out there and not know what you're talking about, because how can you tell it? Yeah. And if people at home don't understand, then they might call you out also. They might send you an email or you yes. know, call you out on Twitter. People can be very biased on the comments section of the media. Yeah. Very. And then sometimes I'll be like, okay, I want to stay see what this game show is because I missed the episode and didn't have it on recording. And then sometimes you'll scroll you'll scroll through the comments or you'll watch it and you'll see it and you're like, why is this there? Like Okay, social media may be a place to write comments, but it's more about what you're seeing and you should congratulate versus right. what's That's happening on the media with hatred comments. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's just uh, something that unfortunately, I guess we're, we're going to have to deal with, you know, because everyone, everyone has a voice and on the internet, everyone can, you know, they yes, the they good want. news is I haven't seen it on the local four ones. There we go. <laughs> local four is great. Yes. What is the best part, in your opinion, of WDIV Insider? Now, when you say insider, what do you mean by that? Like when you go to WDIV.com mm -hmm. and make the insider account, what's your favorite part about that? So I'm going to be totally honest with you, man. I don't really deal too much with that. And I can't even answer that for you. That's the, that's one of the only questions I probably won't be able to, to answer for you. Cause I, I have nothing to do with that at all, man. So then you don't ever write the newsletters for it. No, not at all. Uh, the reporters don't really know anything about the insider part. Or... At least I don't. So, yeah, man, sorry. You're good. This this is the second interview tonight. Most people know it. Some people know it. Some people don't. It's okay. There we go. All right. Um, do you ever have anxiety well or before you are reporting? Yeah, sometimes it might happen. Uh, when I first started in the business, it happened a whole lot. Nowadays, if it does happen, then I try to use that anxiety and then turn it into adrenaline, if that makes sense. Yes. And you take it and use that, it for fuel. Yeah, that's right. And sometimes that will steer you right exactly where you need to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have to put anything on your face before you're reporting? Not me. That's only the anchors. Yeah, because they have all the lights on them and the you know, really, really high tech cameras and all that stuff. Um, I think at one point I was wearing makeup and all that stuff, but I just stopped. Because it wasn't required. Yeah, it's not required or anything like that. Are you, are you able to wear sunglasses on a sunny day when reporting or do you have to take it off to report? Yeah, you would take them off. I, I did that once before when I was younger, and uh, my boss wasn't too happy for me. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't too happy with me. Uh, what's the easiest thing for you to report on? Easiest thing for me to report on is any positive story that I'm doing. So anything where I can showcase the good of the community, rather than something, unfortunately, that we have to deal with a lot, which is negativity, um, I am all over that story. Um, what is your least favorite thing to report on? 
Uh, it would probably be all the crime, unfortunately, that happens. Sadly, there's just too much of it right now. Yeah, it's a ton of it. So uh, we have a lot of stories that we have to deal with sometimes where kids, children might get hurt, and those are really hard to do. Do you, is there like, does half the reporting team work on the positive and half splits off to negative or? No, we all pretty much, yeah. There's a role who wants it? Yeah, sort of, you know, in the morning when we're, you know, when we're having our meeting, that's when things are decided, you know, there. Ah. And so depending on what the news of the day is, you might get a good story or you might get a bad one. So you know of most of the breaking news is beforehand that it just airs as like, oh, breaking news of something no, that hasn't no. been released? No. So we know of what we're going to have to do for the day at the beginning of the day. But a lot of the time, most of the time, it changes. So if something happens, then our phones are ringing with their bosses calling, telling us, OK, don't go there we're going to have you go here now or whatever story you've already done for the day we're now dropping that we're going to send you over here to this oh yeah and then that's how breaking news happens um so does the people that write the scripts in the anchor room get the uh breaking news and write up a little script and then send it into the what do you mean the people that write the script in the anchor room like the people that write the scripts for the anchors Oh yeah, the people yeah, the people that write the script for the anchors, they they have nothing to do with whatever I'm going to say or whatever I'm doing on the field. Everything that I'm reporting on, it's all coming from me or I'm getting information from a source and then reporting it from there, but no one writes what I report. Ah. Mm-hmm. Um I know it was probably like 2019 you started working for Local 4. Right? Was it what month was it? Like that was October. Time? Yeah, October. Ah, I don't know why, but I felt like October was the right answer. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking it, and I was gonna guess. Oh yeah, you should have, man. You should have. Yeah, it was October. I think I started in October, and then I debuted, I believe, in November, because we had two weeks of training that I had to undergo first. And then after that, I was able to basically hit the ground running. I didn't need the training, but that's something that they just do to make sure that you're good with what you're going to be handling with the job. So what happened in the training? Uh, Well, the training was really just us like going around and shadowing other reporters that were already like working here. So I went out with Sean Lay. I went out with Rob Maloney. I think I went out with Paula Tutman once but I was mainly with Sean Lay. Oh, Jason Colthorpe also. I was with Jason Colthorpe. So I was just following them, seeing the workflow, how they're able to turn two stories a day. Um, I wasn't used to that at my old station. I was only used to doing one story a day. Oh, uh, so, so they had a bunch more reporters then. Yeah. Well, what do you mean at my old station? Yeah. No, not necessarily. It's just here, the load is so much, I mean, you have so much news that happens in the city of Detroit. So that's what we have to do. We have to turn to here. It's a little abnormal. Uh, Every other station that I've worked at, it's only been one story a day. But here you have to, you know, you have to be able to multitask a lot. Now, I'll also let you know this too, Max. You, You didn't even ask this question, but when I was at every single other station, I was a one man band reporter which means I was my own cameraman. I was my own editor. Of course, I'm the guy in front of the camera, but I'm the guy behind the scenes as well. So I handled all that stuff, uh, you know, as a single person, as a single individual. Was it tougher at the other places than local four? No, not at all. So I will say the multitasking, when I first got into the station, it was... Uh, it was a little hard at first when I first started over in, you know, Jackson, Tennessee, trying to get into the, the flow of things. But after a while, you know, you're able to manage one story. You know, that's nothing. Coming here, for example, covering one story in Ann Arbor and then having to travel, you know, back to the city of Detroit, that happens all the time. So you might have two different stories in two different locations, um, you know, in our viewing area 
and you have to somehow make that work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this was way harder if you ask me. What? But you know, I was able to hit the ground running, and I was a. Uh, I remember when I first started, I was a little nervous seeing all the great reporters that we have here, people who have been here for years. You know, like Sean Lay, of course, Paula Tubman, you know, Devin, of course, all of these names that have basically created a legacy for Local Four. You know, I was asking myself, would I be able to stack up against them? And you know, as far as me handling the workload and being able to at least, you know, swim and not drown, you know, it was great. It was a good feeling. And you just added to that legacy too of, okay, you're new here now, and this is what you're doing. Every person who get who joins Local 4 adds that to that legacy. That's right, man. You add to the pot, and that's really cool. What COVID protocols were mandated to work in person? Uh, well, if you don't mind, I'd like not to get into the whole COVID thing, if that's okay. okay. Yeah. Only because I was not at the station a lot of the time, we were doing a lot of remote working during that, that period. So. so your meetings were virtual? Yeah, for the most part. But I can't really speak on, you know, anything else as far as like mask wearing and, and, and all that stuff that happened in the building. Were you required to wear a mask during COVID when reporting? During reporting, yeah, yeah, when it when it first started, absolutely, out in the out in the field, it was a very interesting and scary time because we didn't know, you know, what was going on out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, now we're done with the talking of COVID. So, when did what year did you start news broadcasting? Or that was twenty. Well. Do you mean like professionally or do you mean when I was like... Like your not. first news role. My very first news role was in middle school. I was like a news anchor for our middle school news channel. Ah, so you basically did stuff like announcements of around the school stuff? Yeah, pretty much. That's how it worked. But they had it like a, a traditional, almost like a traditional news broadcast. Oh. We would sit in, you know, in front of this desk and all that stuff, and uh, we would have to read the teleprompter. So in a way, it was kind of training. And then when I got to high school, I started doing stuff like that, too. And that just kept me, you know, kept me in there. And then when I got to college, it was a breeze. And I was able to get an internship during my senior year at WSB in Atlanta. And that was great. And so it's it's kind of been like, you know, something that I've always wanted to do. Did, have you ever filled in for one of the anchors before? Not yet. Keep your fingers crossed for me though, Max. Yes. <laughs> Everyone is good. Yeah, man. We got know, some great people. I know I've seen Sean Lay guest before and Rod Maloney. That's right. And then I know Priya Man doesn't count like that because she's already an anchor and a reporter. Exactly. And Priya's great, too. Everyone's great. Everyone, man. I Everyone. mean, I haven't gotten to speak with everyone yet, but from what I've seen behind the scenes through Instagram photos and uh, through the cameras. Mm-hmm. Do you follow me on Instagram, Max? No, I was just actually looking at that before. Yeah, I got to follow you and everything, man. All right, some, some of the anchors have <laughs> it, and then it's like some of the reporters don't, so it's like, yeah, okay. I mean, some people, they want to live private lives. Yes, which, which is, is okay. Fine, yeah. And, you know, some people, they want you to know what's going on behind the scenes. Yes, I know Grant and Priya, when they first started, they showed the video, and then there was hand sanitizer involved. <laughs> yeah so yeah man grant's a cool guy too grant came during the middle of the pandemic yes yeah i i haven't gotten to interview him or priya yet but i did send out emails to I'll everyone try to put in a good word everyone you. okay so far i've only gotten to Devin, bernie and you um i'm in the works right now with tim pamplin and michelle oliver all right Awesome, man. And then Hank Winchester and Dr. Frank McGeorge couldn't. Okay. So that 
it's right now what I have. All right, man. I'm um, glad to do this for you. Yes. Um, is it hard to report outside in the winter? Absolutely. Uh, that is, <laughs> that's the worst, man. I'm sorry. I've got this thing, and I don't know if you've already seen it or not, Max, but like sometimes when the wind's blowing and I'm out there reporting, my eyes can't take it. They're still not used to it. So they get really watery. And so sometimes I might have a tear or two that like falls down my face. So uh, I'm always a little self-conscious about that, you know? I haven't seen it on camera yet, but maybe, <laughs> I, maybe I've been looking at the TV, just not or wherever I was watching it, just not that close. Uh, it's all right. Yeah, man. Uh, in the winter months. It's it's bad, especially on a really really windy day. Or the yeah, or the cold, windy. Yeah, you know I'm from Atlanta, so I'm used to really warm weather. Ah. Yeah, and then I worked in the South for my first two stations, so it was a big adjustment going from Mississippi to Cleveland, and then from Cleveland to Detroit. What's your favorite event to report on, or? Anything that has to do with skateboarding. I did see that interview. I did see <laughs> yeah. that interview last October. Yeah, man. It aired live. And I'm like, I did not know you were a skateboarder. Yeah, that's been my main hobby ever since I was a kid. Um, what is the, like the local Ford van equipment that moved out of the truck? Uh, basically just the camera and the tripod microphone lights i think that's it is the microphone hard to put on or is it just like a clip thing that goes on your pants and then a wire and then a clip on the microphone and you just turn it on yeah that's pretty much it we have two different types you got the one that you can basically you know like you just said clip on to your lapel your tie collar all those things and then you put the little box either in your pocket or you clip it onto your belt. Mm -hmm. But the other mic is just the traditional stick mic where you see someone out there holding it. Yep, I've seen that too. I've seen them both. Yeah, so we go back and forth on what we use. And do you ever have um, a thing where you put into your ear while reporting so you can hear from the station? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's what we call an IFB. That's the traditional one. It's like uh, what you see the Secret Service wearing. I don't know if you ever saw that, but the yes. little there that goes around and all that yes. stuff. During, I used to wear that. Oh, during, on, what are you saying? During the interview that I had with Devin, I we got to see that. We got to see that. Okay, there you go. So yeah, that's and, the IFB. But I stopped using that a while ago. I didn't like the wire because I have weird ears. So sometimes the wire would push my ear down and I didn't oh. like that. Yeah. So how do they contact you if you're... So what I use now are basically just Bluetooth earphones. If you ever just like look and maybe zoom in, you'll see I'll have like a little tiny little black round thing inside of my ear. It um, doesn't look like an, a pair of AirPods, so it doesn't hang down. Yeah. But it just goes right into it. And I love that so much more because now it doesn't mess with my weird ear. It doesn't like, you know, push it down or anything like that. Uh, I don't have to like put the wire down my back or, you know, in clothing. I can just take it, put it in and take it out. Ah, so, so you guys have your choice with that. Yeah, we have our choice. Some of the folks, they like to do it the old school way, which is fine. But me personally, I love having the Bluetooth in. And I mean, technology keeps advancing. So it someday, maybe technology will connect to those box things that you used to use. Yeah, they might. That'll be cool. So, I mean, we'll see. The Bluetooth thing goes in my ear. I just download my cell phone and and that's it. I mean, it, it works well. So, I don't know. I might want to stick to the Bluetooth, man. <laughs> what, what stories are you working on right now or what stories are going to air at 11? Uh, well, I'm not working on anything that's airing at 11. My story already aired earlier today at Five and 5.30. Um, so if you guys go and look and maybe go back and watch, it was a story about a gentleman who was uh, unfortunately having some issues 
with harassing people uh, at a few businesses on the east side. And so we had an update today from police. And uh, man, that's a, that was a pretty right. interesting one. I will link that video as well as your bio on Click on Detroit. Hey, thanks a lot, Max. You're welcome. Do you have any stories that you filmed today that'll air tomorrow? No. So I'm a general assignment reporter. So most of my stuff, everything that we like film usually airs the day of unless something changes. I don't have any more questions for the air. So if oh, no I'm going to end the video and then we can talk a little bit after. Well, can I ask you a few questions about yourself? Yes. Yes. Go <laughs> right ahead. All right, man. So, so tell me about yourself, man. How, how'd you get interested in doing this? Well, I probably like after video games, I like stopped um, doing that. And then I was like, watched a bunch of TV. And then I'm like, what's this person? I think I've seen it before online. So then I'll look online of the show and then the cast and I'll be like, oh, and then I started watching. Well, I've always watched, but not as much as I do now, but in the past and then I just continued that and I'm like one day I was checking out the website or figuring out how to use it and I saw the meet the team thing and I'm like interesting so then I took the emails and started contacting people yes there we go. I mean I've been planning to do stuff like this for over a year now or about over a year but I wanted a couple things first like a microphone you're not able to see it but Oh, you got it. Oh, but some something to make it easier to talk or that would make the voice clear. All right. And then right now I have my questions printed out. I'm looking to be more eco-friendly and get like a camera light thing that can clip onto the top of the computer and hold the script digitally okay. so that I can read it and still be facing directly at the camera. Oh, you got it, man. That's cool. I mean... You're how old are you, by the way? Uh, just started teenage years. All right, man, that's cool. You're you're, you're kind of doing things that I used to do in a way. I mean, it's different now because the technology has changed, and you're able to, I mean, have a conversation with me. Yeah, you know. But the other thing is, I guess it's a great time to be able to take advantage of that technology, man. Yes. You know, this is stuff that I was trying to do as a kid with like a a tape camcorder you know and, and stuff like that so keep on going what's what's your Thank your you. career aspiration though um uh, what does aspiration mean what do you aspire to be well probably either like a cook i i do love to do cooking it doesn't matter if it's baking or cooking on a grill stove or anything like that it's all fun uh or film creator and producer right. and writer awesome man that's cool that's pretty much it <laughs> that's all i wanted to ask all right you, well thank you for joining on the live video it's not actually airing live but right. thanks for joining on the video thanks for having me max You're welcome